Okay, guys, so I'm really happy to have everyone here today. Uh, one of, first thing I want to do is just make sure you guys can hear me okay. So if you can hear me all right, just go ahead and put anything in the chat box. I don't care. Just put anything. Okay, great. We've got loud and clear, audio good, sound checks okay. So and so, okay, so great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, all right. Awesome, guys. Okay, so I'm really happy to have everyone here today. And we will be recording this. We're recording this right now. So barring any unforeseen circumstances, we'll be able to, you'll have this in the archives to view later. Now, this is, uh, this is how you probably recognize me. I wanted to tell you, I've got a little agenda for today. I've got a lot of things to go through. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and jump in. The first thing I wanted to go through today was just sort of uh, tell you a little bit about myself real fast, because a lot of you already know me, but some of you don't. Some of you are new, and uh, so I just wanted to sort of get you a little bit familiar with me. The people that already know me definitely know that, you know, I've been here for a long time. <laughs> Web Dimensions is my Florida corporation. It has been uh, incorporated since 2002. So we're, we've been here forever. We're not going anywhere. So, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't incorporate yesterday. So here we are. Now, you're probably familiar with this picture of me from the sales page of IC Keyworks and all that. This is my nice conservative look. In case you didn't know, I'm also a musician, producer, Got a few records out, uh, been playing a long time. And so this is me wearing my musician's uh, hat, as it were. But um, basically, you know, I was in the music biz for a long time, and I kind of at one point just said, you know, I'm really tired of basically having to fight everyone to get paid all the time. Even though I'm doing a great job, I got great gigs, you still have hassles, you know. So I just decided to become a programmer. So I had a really good friend that was a software engineer and he kind of led the way into me. So I started learning software engineering and got pretty good at it. And this was almost 20 years ago now that I started doing that. I still do music. I'm still a record producer, but I also produce software. Now, if you got on our launch last year, you probably recognize me <laughs> like this. Um, and if you knew me way back, this is what I look like. <laughs> And this is sort of my inner spirit. Uh, here's me with a with a band, a couple of famous cats I won't mention. Here's me riding the surf in the band. Here's me collecting my black belt from my master young back here. Uh, and here's me working at Microsoft. Yes, I worked at Microsoft. And it was a great, great learning experience enough to really propel me in, in my software engineering career. And a couple more, a couple more picks just, oh, here's Mr. Wonderful. This is a, oh, this is a great one where I was, you know, definitely get, making money playing those bars. And a little bit closer to what I would generally look like, you know, playing gigs these days, something like this with my rig. Anyway, back here. Now, let's get on to the keywords. So you know a little bit about me, who I am. Um, now, let's get into why you're here today. You're here to learn about keywords, obviously. Keywords is something I've been uh, developing now for mm, a year and a half, a good year and a half. I've been working on keywords, okay? We have worked out a lot of the issues. Um, but, you know, you're still going to come across bugs every now and then. And um, just to put it in context, now, when I worked at Microsoft, <laughs> I learned at Microsoft they allow, for every new feature in a software, they allow two weeks to add the new feature and then eight weeks to debug the feature. And for every one programmer, they have eight bug testers. 
So it's, you know, it's, we don't quite have that kind of resources now. So every time, you know, a bug may come up in a software or some little issue. So I have to just talk to me about it because I work on this stuff all the time. We will work out any issues that you might have. And also I've got new features that are coming, so on and so forth. But anyway, let's go ahead and just jump in. Here is the, here are the things I wanted to talk about. Okay, we got through number one. Now, in order to access your blogs, of course, you're going to need to have that plugin installed on your server. Now, remember, you've got two license keys and two downloads when you purchase keywords. And one of them is for the software, and then the other is for the plugin. So if you have the plugin installed on your server, then keywords can talk to that server. And if, that, if keywords can talk to that server, it's going to show up nice and green over here. And if it can't talk to that server, it's going to show you red. And it's going to say over here, plug in, not install or enable. But if you do have the, the plug in installed, you're going to see whatever's on that blog displayed down here. And you're going to have this nice green, uh, green light. Okay, so now when you're adding your blog over here, I already have quite a few put in here, but let me just um, add a new one just to go through the motion. When you do your blog address, just remember you do not put the WP admin section in, so it's going to be like you don't have to put the HTTP, it will be added when you tab out of there. And then Well, what you want to do is test it. When you have your credentials in here, you want to go ahead and just click test. And if it says error 2032, that means one of two things. You can see I got that error, right? Now that means one of two things. It means either you have the blog address incorrect and it can't find that blog on the internet because it doesn't exist, or you may have a plugin on your blog that blocks the, the calls. And the one that we know about that does that is called bad behavior. So if you have bad behavior plugin on your blog, your chances are you're going to be seeing that error 2032. Um, profile name is just a name for you to remember it by. The blog address is where the URL of the blog goes. Okay. And Bruce, yes, with your purchase of Keyworks, you received not only a software that installs like this on your, on your computer, but you also received a plug-in download. Okay, so this system works with both. The software is what you use to design and create all your stuff. Then you can zap all that stuff directly onto your blog in order to, uh, you know, and just that's what the plugin is. It's a conduit for the commands. The plugin installs on your WordPress blog. Okay. Now, people are asking me to make keywords bigger. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to help, but I'll do my best. Um, and yes, you would need to install that on every site that you want to control with keywords. Okay, you want to install the plugin on every blog that you want to control with Keyworks. And again, if that if that plugin is installed on the target blog, and that means the blog that's in this selector right here, then you're going to see the green light, and it says Silo Factory is installed on the selected blog. If you switch to another blog profile. And it's going to poll that blog and see is the plug in there and and it may say it is or or it isn't depending on whether you have it installed like this one does not have the plugin installed so it shows a big red no silo factory connection on selected blog 
But then when you switch back to the one that does have it, you're going to see right away it's going to turn green with the red light. Again, um, back to what I was doing over here. Now what I had done was I added a new blog and I'm just going to call it test right now, number one. And I put in a blog address and a login and a password for my WordPress blog, which I think is on this website right here. You know, again, you do not put the WP admin section in there. Now if I test it, it's giving me error 2032. Again, what that means is either the blog does not exist on that address or you have a plugin called Bad Behavior, which would be stopping our calls. Now, the problem that I have here is that I put the wrong address in. Okay, so I'll try it again, error 2032. Now, I forgot there's a 1 at the end of that. So now if I test it, it says <laughs> the login credentials are incorrect. So that's why I have to find out. Okay, I'll change my credentials and test it again. And now it says logged in successfully. And then I'm going to want to save it after that. So now we have it saved and logged in successfully. And there we are. Okay. Do I have any questions on the blog settings right now? <clears throat> I appreciate all your questions and uh, I'm going to answer all of them. Mr. D. Bean or Ms. Um, D. Bean. I will answer the, that question as we go forward, Daniel, uh, but I'm going to, um, I want to stick to the topic so we can get through everything and, and just cover everything for everyone. Absolutely. Um, so if you don't have any more, yes, success tracks to just the domain URL without the WP admin as I'm showing it here. And Yes, P.W. Burkhan Keywords does use the same credentials as someone with the WP blog admin rights. If you do not have rights on the blog, you cannot log in and you cannot do operations. Dale asked me, can it create as subdomains? Well, actually what, it, what you do is you create your blog on the, on the domain. You create it on the subdomain, and then if you wanted to access a subdomain, you're going to put that subdomain into the URL like this. Okay, that's how. Okay, so let's move on. We've talked about the blog site. So this is kind of important because you need to be able to target those blogs. And... Um, So when you when you do have your uh, your blogs in there, they're going to show up in this list here under profile. These are the blogs, right? So if you create a project, and I'm going to just go ahead and create a new project now, and just for the heck of it, I'm going to say German Shepherds, and I'm going to save that. So now I have a new project that's called German Shepherds. And you notice it did add that keyword to the top of the list here. Now to make this complete, I'm going to select the blog that I want to target with this. And I'm going to select it here. And you notice immediately I get the green light and I get the existing blog categories. And there's no menu, so there's nothing showing up here. Once I've selected that profile, I'm going to save project settings. So now if I switch to another project, and then if I switch back, well, <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that, but it, uh, it should, be, should be targeting that, that blog profile. Okay, so and if you want to see that, that blog, you can click here. Great. I'm glad to see Tanya is going to be addressing the question, so I can just go ahead and move on with everything as we go forward. Thanks, Tanya. Um, okay, so there's nothing on this blog right now. 
So what we will do is proceed to get some keywords and build a little silo for this. Actually build a, a few silos for it. But before we get to that, I want to talk about how we get our keywords. Now, a lot of people ask me about the SEM Rush thing. Now, I think SEM Rush is priceless because it allows you to take any keyword string and populate that with Google stats, right? Like, um, Uh, for example, talking about the search volume, the competition, the cost per click, the kind of thing that you're going to get on Google Keyword Planner. However, you do not need SEM Rush to get that data. And I'm going to show you exactly how we would get that data without SEM Rush. And do that, I'm going to go to my browser. I'm going to go to Google AdWords just really quick. and show you how we uh, we import this and you won't need SEM rush to get all the data the same data it just takes a little bit more work the, the SEM rush is really extremely convenient and helpful I'm going to show you why that is but first I'm going to just show you how we get around not using SEM rush if you don't want to use it of course you would need you know a Google AdWords account in order to access their new keyword planner tool. Give me just a minute to load this up. Okay, so once we get in here, then we're going to click on tools and keyword planner. And we kind of have all the same options Now, a lot of people are coming up with questions about kind of um, things that aren't really related to what I'm trying to go into right now. So I will answer all your questions before we get done. But right now, I want to just follow through with my, my flow right here. Okay, so let's say, I don't know why I choose German Shepherds, but I often do that. So... Um, just for a heck of it, let me see what happens if I just kind of localize it. And I'm going to remove these countries and just say United States. I could also go Miami. I think I could just see right in Miami. So right now I'm just kind of trying to maybe see if I can limit the amount because I want to import them and I don't want to get a huge 800 list which will keep us importing for five minutes <laughs> so uh, okay we got 60 so we got 60 keywords here that are related to German Shepherds now one thing I want to I want to point out to you guys right now you need to click this right here, Keyword Ideas, not Ad Group Ideas. Okay, Keyword Ideas. And you get your search. Now, yeah, again, there's 800. I don't really want to import 800. So let me see what I'm going to do here. See, much of that doesn't have anything to do with Miami, so, but... Um, I want to add all. I'm trying to find a term that's going to give me just a few keywords. It's not too many. They don't do that. So let's just go ahead and add all. Well, I didn't want to really add those. Actually, what I wanted to do is download. Okay, so we'll download. Click download. And save file. That's kind of weird. We didn't get any keywords at all. So let's see what the deal is. Okay. Let's go back. Get ideas. Well, that's why it's not giving us any for Miami. So let me just go back to German Shepherd. 
get ideas. Okay, now we got these keywords. What I can actually do is filter these. Now I like you know, I like keywords for this better. So I'm gonna just download these again. Download save file. Now we have all these keywords here. You see there's 521, so I don't want to use all those. I just want to import a few. So what I'm going to do is sort of truncate this file just so I can show you really quickly, you know, how you're going to uh, import. So we've got now basically the exact same file but with only 40 keywords. I'm going to need to do is find that file. It's in my downloads over here. Is it in order to go? Okay, I'm going to have to look at my Dallas. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Show all downloads. Open the folder, and here it is. Well, I'll put it in a weird place. <laughs> we will find that 621. So now I'm going to go back to Keyworks, and I'm going to go to this Get Keywords screen here. And I'm going to go import AdWords CSV. And just for now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually move that file into this directory so it's just so we don't get confused later. Um, okay, so there it is. So now, once again, I've clicked import AdWords CSV. And this is the CSV, so I'm going to open that. And now you can see all those keywords are importing, and they have all the data that comes from the Keyword Planner. <clears throat> okay. So, guys, keep, keep those questions coming, but just remember I'm going to be answering them at the end or after I go through the material that I'm trying to present. I also want you guys to know that this is not the last webinar we'll do. I'm going to keep uh, supporting you with this product perhaps every week until everyone feels really comfortable with it. Now, now that we have this data load, this is like I was trying to tell you, this is just one way that we can get our data by importing that spreadsheet. But as you can see, we have all the data here. Now, so that I don't have to um, do that again. What I want to do is select all and save for later. Because when I save for later, that is going to give me the ability to open these same keywords from my software and not have to go back to Google. What I will do though is look, my main keyword here is where it's going to get saved under. So. I'm just going to say German Shepherds now for the heck, but I think that will do it. And now we I've select all, save for later, execute. So now you can see it's just going through all those 40 keywords and it's saving them to the internal database of keywords. Delatosh, I I uh, truncated that file, if in case you remember, don't remember. I deleted everything but 400, just so that we don't stay here all day importing 800 keywords. Okay. So now, if you want to see those keywords that you imported, so we can actually clear all, and and click Get More, Open Save Results Sets, and it looks like it was actually saved under just German Shepherds at that time. So that's what we got, German Shepherds. 
and these are the keywords that I had downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and sort of delete. So if you ever want to delete these, you can delete them. You can either delete selected keywords like this, just get rid of a few of them, or you can actually delete the entire set like this. <clears throat> Let's give it a second. And it gives you a nice readout to when it's done. So we don't have those in here anymore. Um, just to show you how to manage that. Now, I showed you how to import your keywords from Google Keyword Planner. Now, I'm going to get to that, Roger. Give me time to go through everything, okay? Guys, just try to bear with me as I go through all the different parts so you can be familiar with everything, okay? Because there are a lot of different areas. It's so versatile, this program. It's not like a one-click, it's not a one-trick pony, okay? This program has so many things in it. Okay, so now let's take a moment and go back to the settings here where it says accounts. If you click on SEM Rush, now we talked about SEM Rush, and I just showed you how to get data without SEM Rush. You do that by importing from Google Keywords. But if you have SEM Rush, you can just take regular keywords and get that data from SEM Rush. For example, if I wanted to search German Shepherds here, now this is a different section. It's called the Keyword Explorer. The Keyword Explorer does not search keywords from Google Planner or SEM Rush, but what it does is it queries all three of the main search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and it gets the keyword suggestions for your uh, seed keyword that you put in. Now, you know how to do that by yourself, but basically it's the same thing as you know, if you go to Google like this and you start typing in, um, actually it's in here is really where that works. I don't know why I'm not seeing those um, suggestions, but they're supposed to be like, if you put them here now, and now it's going to start displaying these other suggestions, right? These are the suggestions that, that you get from this section, Keyword Explorer. And you get the same suggestions from Bing and from Yahoo. So you're going to get all of them in the Explore tab. So if I put German Shepherd in here and I click Explore, As you can see, I'm going to start to get a whole ton of keywords from Google, Bing, and Yahoo. And then it just repeats and it gets more and more and more. And this will go on and will get you a thousand keywords if you let it keep running. Okay? No, it does not. The keyword wheel does not exist anymore. Okay, so you can just stop. Now, what I want to bring to your attention is... You notice how we have uh, sections here for search volume, competition, and CPC. However, there's no data in there now. And that's because when you do go to Google and you look at these suggestions like that, <clears throat> they don't naturally come with that data. They just come with suggestions. So if you get the suggestions here, they're not coming with the data. But... The cool thing is if you have SEM Rush, you can get the same data with the stats attached. And let me show you. I'm just going to click Clear All. I'm going to leave the same CT keyword, and I'm going to tick this box, Get SEM Rush Data, and I'm just going to explore exactly the same way. And now you'll see all the statistics automatically get loaded for every keyword that has them. Now some 
keywords don't have the data. And if they don't, it'll come back as zero like these. But you can get ones that do. And then you can stop. And when you stop, that will these will continue to populate until they're all populated. Now these are all calls to SEM Rush, so it is part of your paid subscription. The cool thing though is what you can do is select all, save for later, and then they will all get saved with the data in your internal database. I guess I'll just do that real quick. It's going to take a second because there's 70 keywords here, but you can see now it's saving all of those and it's saving them into my internal database. So I don't have to query SEM Rush again for that data. We've got it now in our internal database. There's a button um, up here that says stop when the search is running. It doesn't appear unless the search is running, Roger. Then you can just click stop. Okay, so now we've got those keywords in the data store. And where do we find them again? We go to Get Keywords, and if you're seeing this screen, you click More Keyword Options, and you get back to this screen, you open Save Results Sets, and then you're going to find those keywords under the seed keyword that you save. So under this German Shepherd, I have these 74 results that I just saved with the data and everything. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a pretty cool thing about SEM uh, Rush because you can just do the exploring, get all the data loaded into it, which you normally can't do that if you don't use SEM Rush. So that's one way to um, to get another way to get data with statistics. Now, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. It's going to take a second. And then I'm going to show you another way to get keywords. Okay, so with just a second, and we'll be done there. And guys, you know, keep those questions coming, but I'm going to answer most of them after I go through my sequence, okay? So I want to try to touch on everything today, not get bogged down in... Um, answering your um, respectable questions that you have here until after I'm done with my main material. Okay, so we just deleted that one. Now I'm going to go back to the Explorer section here, and this time I'm going to do an import from flat file. And it's, it's good that if you, you do it in the import section, because if you do it in the keyword, I mean in the keyword explorer section, because if you do it in there, you can do something special. I'm going to show you in a second. But now let me just show you what I'm importing. This is a flat file. This is not a spreadsheet from Google. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and open this. And as you can see here, I've got a list of keywords. And in fact, we don't want to have any spaces, so we want to have one keyword per line. And this is a flat file, and it's a text file. I'm going to save that again, just so that we, well, you know, maybe I won't. This doesn't want me to save it, so let's save it just for now. Okay, so you saw what's in that file, right? So now I'm going to just select that file. Again, the way I did it was I'm on Keyword Explorer. I select, select Import and I select that file, I just click open. Now you can immediately see all those keywords getting loaded into the Explorer section. But again, they do not have the data attached. So here's the cool thing again, I'm going to clear all. If you do have SEM Rush, you click this button and you import that flat file, you will automatically get the data from SEM Rush loaded into those keywords. As you can see, they're all getting loaded in. So it's very, very cool. You can just have a list of keywords and then automatically get the data loaded in. When you're ready, you select all, save for later, and execute that.
And so now they've been saved and we can go back here, open the save result sets and where are they? Not exactly sure which one they went on. I think that was it. And so that's how that works. Now you can also import it from flat file here and it will get load it loaded into this grid which is the get keyword screen or you can import them into your project now if you import them in your project it's not going to load the data okay so you can do that though you could just import it site keyword open it and then they get imported into your project, not into the data store, right? <clears throat> so now you can see we have all these keywords in our project that we just loaded in from that flat file. But that's not really probably what you'll do. I uh, just wanted to show you the versatility, I'm going to delete all of those from the project so we're back to where we started before I did that. Just give it a second. Okay, now let's say that we're going to start building our silo now. We're going to start thinking about building a website. So if we're on this screen and we want to get some keywords, we can just click get more can either get those keywords in any way that I just showed you or you can open the save results set <clears throat> and I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just import that same list get the data the, the SEM rush data and Let's see. Well, the one thing I didn't show you yet is that you, you can also type in your keywords like this to your project. And it'll just show up. Okay, so it's kind of hard to sort of go in a straight line because there's so many things in this and a lot of people are asking me questions. So before I go any further, let me explain what these SEA icons are because a lot of people want to know what those are. Now if you click the S button, you're going to be directed to a search. And you know what, I, I actually missed another way to get keywords that I forgot to tell you about, which is searching on SEM Rush. Now SEM Rush can search exactly the same way that you search on Keyword Planner, the way I showed you on Google. It's, it's for the most part, is exactly the same data. You can also select the data center. So if you want to get it from a different country, you can search down here. And you go execute search, and this is SEM Rush, and then you're going to see this little thing and it's now has gotten all these keywords from SEM Rush. Now you can see there's a hundred keywords retrieved. Now in my settings, I have it set to get a hundred from SEM Rush. And that will limit the number of calls that I make to SEM Rush because they do charge you a little something every time you do a search. And that's also why it's good to be able to save these keywords to the database because then you don't have to search them again. But you can set it to a higher number like this. You can also check how many credits you have left for SEM Rush in any time. I've got quite a few. So I've set it for 800 results. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to clear all, get more, and I'm going to do the SEM Rush search. You can see it's set to 800 again right here. And now I'm going to search the German Shepherd, and it should get me 800 keywords. It takes a little bit longer. And so now you can see down here, I've got 800 keywords retrieved. Look at them all. 
all those keywords come from SEM Rush. They all have the data that I want. Now, to be smart, the thing to do is go select all, save for later, and execute. Because then you don't have to get them from SEM Rush again, and it doesn't take credits away from your account. Now, the other thing that we want to do here is now that we have a bunch of keywords, okay, again, what these these icons, okay, I, I kind of didn't get through that yet. So the S initiates a search like this. Um, shucks. And when you click E, it's going to initiate an exploration like this. Okay. And when you click A, it's going to initiate an analysis on the anal and the analyze section. So you go over here, sh should, if there's any data for that keyword, it's going to show here. That keyword did not have data with it. So if we try just, uh, and most of these have already done their thing with the data. So let me just try German Shepherd again. And let's say I don't have that selected. So we just go explore and stop. And so now if I want to analyze, I click the A icon and it goes over here and it gets some analysis from uh, from SEM Rush. This comes from SEM Rush. So it won't work if you don't have the SEM Rush subscription, but it gives you the exact local volume, the CPC, the competition, and <coughs> a graph of the search trend. And down below, you're going to see the top four results in Google for that keyword. Now guys, today I'm not really going to be talking about um, strategies for making money. Mainly what I want to do is just walk you through the software and show you how everything works. And then as I said, this will not be the last webinar. And we will be covering strategies and all kinds of things like that in upcoming weeks. Right now I just want to get you familiar with all the ways that you can use this program. Okay, so clicking S starts a new search, clicking E starts a new explore, and clicking A starts the analysis. Okay, now let me just start building a little silo here. Now we've got all these keywords. I think I'm going to go again and search SEM Rush again because I did not save that result set. Um, let me reach, let me just clear this. And I'm going to get more SEM Rush keyword search. And it's, I'm going to remove that. So it's just German Shepherd. And I'm going to execute the search. Now I should get 800. <laughs> Thanks, Delatosh. Appreciate it, man. Um, so now we've got all these. Okay, now the smart thing, and like I said, would be for me to save them for later. But I don't want to waste your time doing that. Instead, I'm going to start right now filtering the keywords. And there are different ways that you might use this data. For example, again, this is Google data. Google isn't always the best way to search for keywords, but it is one way that we do it. And it's one way, you know, it depends on your marketing style. Now, if you are really interested in getting high money, you know, high cost clicks, I mean, like you're an AdSense marketer, right? So you want people to click on your site and you want to get the highest money from those clicks. Then what you you want to do is you want to get the highest paying cost per clicks, right? I'm not seeing really high ones on the German Shepherd thing. Of course, there are other uh, niches that have much higher clicks. But what you can do is you can either sort and just see them sorted by the cost per click 
or you can filter and you do that by going over here you can select whether you want it to show only the what's higher than what you select or only what's lower than what you select because you may be an AdWords marketer in which case you probably want to get the lowest possible click and this can help you with that finding the lowest possible click so you can place ads for that keyword and not have to pay too much but chances are you're probably trying to get the highest number on the highest uh, income from getting them clicked so let's say we can start out by for example we select one dollar and greater than or equal to so we want to see only the keywords that will give us at least one dollar per click right so we've selected that and now we just click apply of here and as you can see we now do not have any keywords with lower than one dollar cost per click and so that can be one way that can help you to make money okay now if you want more expensive clicks give me just a second you want more expensive clicks you can just raise the level here and let's say I only want four dollar clicks or higher then I click apply and now I've got I've got it whittled down to these one two three four five six seven eight nine keywords so one three four, six, eight keywords okay now those are keywords that are going to get me you know some high high cost clicks if people actually search them and come to my site again point PD5 um, you know I mean this there's so many different areas and they're so versatile I'm just no you're not paying for these clicks this is what you'll make money on if you have AdSense right this is the money that will be paid to you if people click on these clicks on your website okay so really I, w I just want to ask you to kind of be patient and you know if you learn all this stuff it's, it's gonna start to paint a picture for you eventually okay good um, now again I'm not really talking today about ranking strategies I'm just telling you the technical stuff behind this <laughs> thanks Tom I wish I could share that but I it wouldn't be nice so I won't um, but I appreciate your sentiment um, okay so we've got these so let me you can you know dial it back to just three dollars and click apply <clears throat> now there's a, there are other ways you could do this too now let's say if I really like that filter I can save that for for other data so I can just click save it and let's say I'm going to call this $3 clicks and say so that's $3 minimum of clicks right I'm going to remove that filter now and so all the keywords come back again well let's say if I wanted to you know a couple days later I said I like that $3 click filter all I have to do is open this filter here from save filters and I click on $3 clicks and apply it and I got only three dollar or better clicks and then I can remove that again now let's say we're not worried about clicks so much or we're more we're worried more about in this case how much the search volume is so we let's you can see we've got quite a variety of search volume here we can sort by search volume and we can see the lowest search volume of these keywords that we happen to get is 90 uh, exact searches per month for that keyword that's okay but maybe we want more you know let's say if we want what do we got at the low at the high end we've got 110,000 27,000 12,000 you know 9,000 8,000 so on and so forth that's some pretty high volume you know of search so let's say if we want to limit ourselves to only those keywords with the high search volume and what we can do is go over here and we've got exact match volume and then we can select let's say 1000 let's say I only want keywords 
that have a minimum of 1,000 searches per month on Google. Okay, so we got this, so now I'm going to click Apply. So now, as you can see, the keywords left on the list are the only ones that, that only the ones that have 1,000 or more search volume per month. I like that filter, so I'm going to save that, and I'm going to call that um, 1,000 plus search volume. Okay, and I'll save that. And again, I can remove that filter, and you see now I have all those keywords again. But I can bring up the save the same filter just by clicking Save Filters, click on 1,000 search volume, and apply. And now I've got only the 1,000 keywords here. I can also mix these filters, and I can go... Uh, the CPC, I want it to be greater than $1, so I can apply that, and I only want low competition. Now, you may or may not want to mess around with competition. That's up to you, but I'm just showing you how this can be used. So now if I apply this, now you can see I now have only the keywords with at least a 1,000 or more search volume low competition, and $1 or more CPCs. Now, that actually could be a good, uh, you know, a good setup for you, depending on your niche and all that stuff, which is we're not getting into all the niche stuff today. I'm just showing you technically how to use the keywords. Okay, now I like that filter, so I'm going to save it, and it's going to be called 1,000 plus, $1 plus, and low competition only. And I'm going to save that. Now I can remove the filter and I could even load up a whole different set of data and but I can use the same filter right here 1000 plus $1 plus low competition only and I apply it. Bingo! That's what we've got. So you can now apply that same filter to any set of data if that filter works for you, you just repeat that. Rinse and repeat. Now let's just say that I'm going to use these, okay? I'm going to use these for my project. And my project, as you can see, I did this German Shepherds over here. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to select all. Sometimes one of them doesn't get selected. If you just select it again, it will select all. And this time I'm going to save to hierarchy. Now, the hierarchy is just more or less another uh, another word for your project, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to execute that. I'm going to save all the selected keywords. Now, if I don't have any selected, they're not going to be saved. So you must select the ones that you want saved. Then you execute with the selected. And I'm going to execute save to hierarchy. Okay, so now the keywords have been saved to the hierarchy, and now we can go over to the project, and you can see here they all are. And if I mouse over those items, you can see the data that got saved with it. Okay, now, Roger, currently we don't have um, cumulative you know, for, for like greater than this, but less than that. We only have greater than and less than. But I will, you know, I think that's a good idea to add that in. So I think you can see that coming in a future release. Now here's the time where, you know, we're going to start working now on, <laughs> thanks Roger, and we're going to start working on now how we're going to actually build this website, okay? Um, before I do that, I think I do want to go ahead and save these for later, too. Hopefully that will work. And let's see. Save for later, because I want to come back to them. I may want to discard some of them, but I want may want to um, get them back later. Okay, so let me... Uh, 
So now those are supposedly have been saved <laughs> to the project. That's not it, but um, might have to do a refresh on that. Anyway, they are saved to the project. <clears throat> now, here's where we get to the kind of sticky stuff that actually it's super fun. Let me just clear my throat. Okay, now we've got some good keywords that we can start playing around with. This list here will represent what you're putting on your blog. Okay, and if you've got this green, go ahead, green light, then you can actually start executing stuff onto that blog. Now, what's really super important here, though, is what you select in these selectors right here. Because if you select CADEG or Category Plus, it's going to create this as a category on your blog. If you select Page, it's only going to, it's just going to create as a page, you know, as a, a web page on your website. Now, you may not know that, you know, the difference between a category and a page. And if not, that's fine. And, and some of you may already know that. But what the difference is, if you make a web page, it's, it's a static page. Whatever you put in that content, that's going to be it. There's going to be no posts or no anything else on it. If you make it as a category, that means you're opening, basically you're opening the channel for curating lots of content to that category. Okay. Yes, it can be a squeeze page. It can be whatever you put on there if you make a page. Whatever you put in there, that's what it's going to become. Okay. You can choose what content goes into a page. And you can also choose what content goes into a post. The difference between a page and a post, however, in categories is that a category will give you multiple content under that category. A page only gives you a page and that's it. I hope that's clear. It's a pretty important concept that you have to get under your belt for this to work. Okay, so I think I'll start with uh, categories. I'm going to start with Category Plus. In fact, I'm going to delete some things, but let's start with German Shepherds, and I'm going to see I can drag and drop these things into the order that I want. Now, I just moved German Shepherd Puppy up under German Shepherds, and you'll notice that as soon as I did that, these two buttons appeared, and that's the save silo, the red save silo button appears. That means you have unchanged rather unsaved changes. You have changes that have not been saved. Okay, so if you don't see that button, then everything has been saved. Mike Lucas, a cat versus cat plus means a category with no content or a category with some content put under it. If you choose cat egg without the plus, you will not get content built underneath that. Okay, so that's important. A page will always create content because it is a page and it requires content. Or you don't have to add it right now, but a page definitely requires content. A category, however, is just a vessel to contain posts. And the posts do have content to each one, of course. So that's the difference between page, category, and category plus. Okay. Now, you'll notice also when you select page, an, another selector pops up. And that's how to create interlinking between pages. But that I'm not going to concern myself with right at this moment. Okay. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Right now what I'm going to do is just going to try to sort of build a little um, structure that makes some sense. I'm not going to worry about what this, what it is right now. 
I'm just going to pick a few and I'm going to discard some other ones. Let's say we have German Shepherd Puppy twice, so I'm going to delete that. Um, German Shepherd Shedding, we know that was a good keyword for uh, $7. That's a $7 click, man, German Shepherd Shedding. If you get somebody to come to your page from that and they click on AdSense, you get $7 in your AdSense account. Um, German Shepherd Rescue is like really a good topic, so I'm going to put that in here. That will be a top topic. And see, if you don't see something you want, you can just type it in and click Add. So that will become a top topic under which I'll put these other rescues. Okay. Now, um, the other ones I'll move up like this. Alsatian dog. Southeast goes under rescue. Rescue goes to the top. Just, just for a second, I'm going to save that right here. Yes, there's a way to do posts. I have not gotten to that yet, but it's coming. Right now, I'm just showing you how to order your silo and get it all set up, the structure that you want. Then we'll get, then we'll get into the content. It's all, it's already been an hour, so I don't know how, I'll go as long as you guys want me to, but you know, this, I think we may have to visit a lot of this stuff in another webinar. But, you know, I'll move these other things up under here. And now what I'm going to start to do is show the parent-child relationships. Now, if I click these, bu these uh, arrow buttons, these will help me to create my parent-child silos. As you can see, I, I'm just going to make the two topics right now which is the German Shepherds at the top and German Shepherd Rescue. And you can see that they now have a structure. I do want to capitalize them, though, because that will look better for my blog. So I click Capitalize, and now they're all capitalized. And since the red Save Silo button is visible, I need to save that silo, so I'm going to save it. <clears throat> Now we have that silo saved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change them to category plus for all of them. I'm going to be adding some automation into this so you don't have to click every single one to do that in the future. But right now that's what you would do. You would select each one individually. And now that there's a plus sign, I can add a little content. And really quick, I'm just going to show you how we might add some content. And this will become a post. And you can either get uh, image content or video content. And if you want to make sure that your image is uh, fully royalty free, I suggest board file. Not sure exactly what the bandwidth problem is over here. Frequently we get bandwidth problems when we try to do, oh, there we go, when we try to do a, our posts. Um, now there's some really cool features that we have as well. Now this icon here, the, the question mark, allows you to research the image to make sure you have the rights to use it. You click that question mark. And it's going to open to wherever the source of that image is. And that was, of course, the same image that I just picked. And it says here, you are allowed to copy, distribute, transmit the work, and to adapt the work. Attribution is not required. That's what That makes this a, a perfect candidate. Pretty much any one of these that are a morgue file are going to say that. Now, if you don't want a hot link to morgue file, we have an awesome feature that allows you to store these images right on your blog. It's the fifth icon, Upload Source Image to Blog. 
Now you can size it like this into the frame. You can also add attribution that you may want to do that if it's a Flickr photo because Flickrs always want you to have the author here like that. But since we're not using or using more file, we don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and just upload this on my blog. Now we are looking at the contents of my media library. It's a brand new blog, so this is the only media library that we have. So I can insert this into my post like this. By clicking the blue T, it creates sort of some pre-formatting for you. If you don't click, click the blue T, if you click the blank icon, it will just put the image without any templating. So you may have content already, you just want to put an image in, that's how you do it. Or you can generate this whole sort of a format here. And as you can see, if I click the image and then I click this button, you can see exactly where that image is, which is on my blog now, right? And you can, we put some alt text in here for you, or you can change the alt text, you can change the size of it or whatever. Okay, so now we have this little post now. You know, obviously you don't want to just say an interesting image relating to German Shepherds, but this gives you the start and it also gives you your keyword content. And then you can, you know, do whatever you want. Now this is not a class on how to create content, which we will do that later, but it's just showing you, you know, what you can do. You can also edit the source code like this. And now let's say if I want to put a nice Amazon product, I can do that by clicking the golden dollar sign here and then click search now. And with my Amazon account details installed, it's going to use the Amazon API to pull up products for you to offer. Not every product has a good presentation, so you can sort of browse them until you might find one that has uh, some good text to go with it and so on and so forth. Not all of them do because people are lazy when they enter their products into, uh, into Amazon. You can also change the keyword at any time and do another search and get different products until you find one that you really like. I'm trying to find one that has some actual text with it. There's one. Okay, now here's one that has the title, the, the price, and the text. Now all I have to do is just click insert into post and voila, my, um, my product is already here. I can write other stuff on here if I want. I can edit this, whatever I want to do. Now, when I'm ready, I click accept and close. And now this one has content. Okay, so that content is already there. This will appear on a post under that category. Now, I don't want to waste your time and go through every single one. But let me, let's, let's do one more. And this time I'll use a video. Now, the, the keyword is German Shepherd Shedding. So if I click on this video, icon, this will bring up videos from YouTube about German Shepherd shedding, okay, which is great. It's wonderful. Okay, so now to get a templated, I mean, a pre-templated post that you can mark up, you click the blue T. If you don't want templating, you just click the blank one. Okay, so I'm going to click Templating, and so now I have a video here. Now, the video does not play in the editor. It just shows as a frame. And it's, you definitely don't want to leave, <laughs> write something here. You might say, like, here is a very good video about, about 
German Shepherd setting and how to brush your German Shepherd dog. And you want to add anything else that you want in there. I mean, you can add value. I definitely recommend that you add value to your websites. But we've got everything pre-templated for you. Now, if I want to insert a product here, make sure you have the cursor in the editor. Then click the golden dollar sign. And let's see if we've got anything about German Shepherd shedding. And we do seem to have a few here. This looks good. Healthy Breeds Omega HP Skin and Coat. Beautiful. That's a wonderful product for this. So I'm just going to insert that. As you can see we now have that product inserted underneath the video. And I'm going to accept and close. Now that should be created as a post under that content. Now again, I don't have time to go through all of them. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just create this and see what comes up with. I'm going to select Create cat Categories and Menus. First, I'm going to click this link so we can see what it looks like without anything on the blog. So you can see it's completely nothing found. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to get ready and do this operation. I'm going to click uh, Create Categories and Menus. I do not need to do anything else because I want this to show up as more or less an authority uh, type of silo which has top level and sub level items. This is not the only way that we can do this and we're kind of short on time but we can also make mini site silos that have deep linking and I want to show you that. I think I better save that for the next webinar or actually I'll do some training for you and I'll share it with you on the member site like for tomorrow. But we will have another webinar. We're going to go over everything. So let's go ahead now and execute this silo. And it's going to give you the option to cancel if you decide not to, but I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And apparently the blog operation has uh, completed successfully. And now you can see that these have all turned green. That means that they are all categories now on the blog that are matched. And you can see here on the left-hand side all the list of categories that we have now on that blog. And we also see our menus down here. The menus are two-tiered menus. Okay, so you want to see it? Okay, let's go. In fact, I'll, you can click this or you can just refresh the site. We're going to refresh it. And so now there we go. We now have our main topic, which is the German Shepherds. We have our menus. And we have our subtopics. Now this is actually, as you can see, this is actually a topic. So that's why we click on the, the link and we are now on that post. Or that post is coming on the front page of our blog because we are, the blog is programmed to show all posts on the front page. Now if I go to the next one, as you remember, was German Shepherd Shedding that we worked on. Now this is a category too, so it's going to show what's underneath it, but to go to the actual post, you're going to click here. Now for one thing I just noticed, I, I forgot a very important setting on this blog. And the important setting that I forgot is called the permalinks. And I'm going to show you right now. You, you really, really must do this on your new blogs. Settings, permalinks, post name, save. Okay, that is so super important to do. Now, instead of being P equals 84 up here, all the posts will now be siloed properly under the keyword name, as you can see, German Shepherds, we go to German Shepherd Shedding. We not only do we have the category name here, but we also have 
the post name in the URL. So that's very important. So I'm glad I, I um, didn't miss that. As you know, we have some very nice posts now. We have a video that plays. I'm not exactly sure what happened to the um, to the product, but I'm going to have to look for that. <clears throat> I'm not sure what, what has gone on um, there, but... Uh, And you see we have all the other categories and posts. And they were all made with posts, by the way. You have recent posts and you have categories. So if we click under any category now, because of the fact that I made them all category plus, they're not only are they a, a category, but they are also a post here. But those posts do not have content because you didn't see me make content for them, right? Okay, so that's how we do that. Now I want to. Um, okay, so guys, I'm I'm doing my best to get through everything as much as I can. I've kind of gotten through number eight, halfway through number eight. Now I have three and a half other items that I intended to get through on this webinar. Do you guys want me to keep going? today and just finish the three items or do you want me to do save it for um, for later thank you IBA software I appreciate that okay they want me to keep going okay it's 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 unanimous you guys want me to drive on okay so I'm gonna drive on okay would you mind if I took a little break for two minutes Okay, I'm going to take a little break for two minutes while I go and use the little boy's room. <laughs> and until then, I'm going to just, I'm going to play this sick jam that an awesome producer made. And I'll be right back in two minutes. Alrighty then, I'm back. Okay, let's let me just take a look here for a second and see. I still have that that there. Okay, um all right. Now I want to show you how we could make a deep linking mini site silo that does not do, um, you know, have everything linked from the front page. You know what I mean? Like when we make what I call an authority site silo, the authority site silo has 
all the items listed in a menu on every page. That actually works really well for what we call the authority, uh, authority sites because it's a really well organized information store. If you look at the, the page source and you scroll down, now here's, here's something that I do. I'm going to just copy the body class of this whole thing, copy the body. And I'm going to use my faithful program, Edit Plus. And now what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you how that website appears to Google. Okay, now this is how the website appears to Google. Can you guys see that? It's like, um, it's very, you're going to see a blank white page and a um, couple of things here, but the main thing I'm talking about is this section right here, because this, this is actually the menu, but it's not even really a menu, it's really a list, okay? And it is exactly an HTML list element. And computers and robots do not see the menu, because the menu is created by a JavaScript that is only executed on the browser that you use. It's not executed on Google's Spider. Google Spider sees this. This is what Google Spider sees. That's why, you know, siloing this way is really effective because really, uh, ultimately, we should not say keywords test site. We should say, you know, German Shepherds or whatever the niche of the site is. And then the sub niches come down here. So, you know, people are saying, like, it's only two-tier. Actually, it's three-tier because you have the, the main site, you have the, the subtopics, and the sub-subtopics. And that's really how it's, uh, it's looked at. Now, with keywords, you can do a child off of a child, but it's, it's kind of a, a little different to, to wrap your brain around, okay? So when we're doing the authority sites, we only do these two levels. And, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and my, you know, to my understanding, doing any deeper than this is kind of like shooting yourself in the foot because there's just too, it's just too deep. If you really want to do a deep linking silo, then you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so we're going to switch to, I'm going to make a new project. And let's just say mini silo. And we might as well use German Shepherds again. I'm going to be mini silo number one. Because we might add more than one uh, mini silo to a site. Okay. So I'm going to save this and put my main keyword here. And this I'm going to switch to another blog, which is, you know, it's exactly the same, but it's blank. And I will save the project settings. So now I'm going to make a little mini site silo and just for the heck of it, I'm just going to add a few keywords without doing all the filtering and all that stuff, just to make it quick. Here, Ms. Shepard, let's say deep puppies, um, GSD training, GSD breeding, GSD um, feeding, you know, I mean, I'm just picking some arbitrary things so I can show you how this works. Okay, now, I'm going to make them all pages, not categories. And we are going to be adding some controls so you can just do that with one click. And that's coming up. 
I don't know if you guys can hear my German Shepherd barking in the background. But she's out there doing her thing. Okay, so I'm going to select page. And every time I select page, you notice it's it splits into two selectors here, okay? I'm going to select page again on all of them. Now, I still want this one to be on the top, and I want the other ones to be kind of deep inside. So I'm going to make them all children of the top one here. Okay, and just while I'm on the subject, I'm just going to go ahead and save this silo. Now, to make it easier, you can hide these side sections so you have a little more room to work with here. The reason that you, and you're going to, this will be apparent to you after I get finished, okay, success tracks. Um, let me just get through this and you'll understand it. So you've seen what the authority silos is like. You've got all your, everything is basically up front and it's interlinked throughout everywhere. Now, just so you can see this I'm working on now, it looks the same, but it's a different blog. It's exactly the same. Uh, brand new site, number two over here, you can see. We have no menus, nothing found, absolutely nothing on it. Now, I'm building this silo. I've made everything a page here. And you know what? I'm going to just do some really super quick content for everything. I'm not going to worry about the products right now. I'm just going to make super fast content. Basically, I'm going to show you how to basically get it set up first and then go and edit it. I'm going to just pick this, insert it in. I'm happy with that. I'm going to accept and close. And I'm going to do that for every single one of these GSD puppies. Let's see. Yeah, cutest German Shepherd puppy. That's what I want. Just click the blue T. Accept and close. Now we're on the GSD training. I'm going to click the video. This is GSD training. Here we go. German Shepherd K9 attack training. That looks good. We'll insert that. Close. Accept and close. GSD breeding. Click the video. Um, <clears throat> breed all about it, German Shepherds. That looks good. We'll pick that. Accept and close. And then GSD feeding. One, one last one. German Shepherd feeding time. That looks good. Now, again, I did not pick these keywords for the sake of the keywords. I really just picked them in order to show you how to create a, a structure, okay? Now, if I click on any one of these C things, it should show me the content that I already pulled up. So they're already there. And now, now what I want to do is I want to interlink. So I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to select pardon me, GSD puppies. The second one I'm going to select the next one, GSD training. Then I'm going to select GSD breeding, GSD feeding, and then the very last one I'm going to select the German Shepherds back to the top again, right? So on these pages we've got content and we're hoping to have a link from this page to this page, 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 and then this page back to the top again, right? You guys following me along? <laughs> now, okay. Now, there's one more. There's one more little uh, trick to this, okay? Now, of course, we want to create categories and menus. Really, what that means is just create categories, pages, content, and menus. Uh, we're not going to add to existing silos because we don't have any on there yet. 
but I am going to say make top level menus only. And what that means is that none of the child's items will be in the menu. Okay, but since we have everything linked, they don't have to be linked on the menu. So let's go ahead and just make that. Once again, we've got nothing here, and I'm going to go ahead and just execute. So let's execute it. Now, if I've done everything correctly, this will now be, you know, part one of my interlinking mini site, which is, it's fun, it's good. Even though it says nothing found, that's okay, because we're not building posts for the front page yet. But you can see here that we now have this button for German Shepherds up at the top. You guys see that? So in the previous one, as you can see, you know, we had full-fledged menus like here. But this one, we only have one button. And why is that? Because that's because I said make top-level menus only. That means that the, only the parent item will be put in the menu. Now, why do we do that? Because, look, I click on this and I go to that page. And of course, I didn't access, I didn't really change up the content. So we just, we have the raw content, but there it is. But now you notice at the bottom here, I have a link that goes to GSD puppies, which is now we're going into our deep linking silo. And now we're on our page for GSD puppies, but there's no link anywhere, anywhere else in the site to GSD puppies, only from the German Shepherds page. Now if we go down to the bottom of this, we also have a link now to GSD Training. <clears throat> again, GSD Training, again, I did not do my permalinks. I have to do that. Um, the GSD Training is not linked anywhere else on the site. So it's linked, deep linked from one page to another. And you see at the bottom of this one, we now have a link to GSD breeding. And now we're, we have the content on D GSD breeding. Looks very nice. And we have a link to GSD feeding. Again, GSD breeding and feeding, they do not have any link on the website except from that one page to the next. Now at the bottom of GSD uh, feeding, we have a link back to our top level item, which is you can see is now selected, and that's where we are. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Huh? That's, that's how you do a deep linking mini site silo. Now we can add another silo right here that does the same thing. So we can end up with these really deep linked uh, link juice circles, you know, inside your own website. And you can really design that any way that you want to. And well, this is the same stuff that, that Becker teaches, by the way. Okay, so let me just go ahead and fix up the permalinks on that real quick. I mean, it's not about how it looks to the spiders IBH software. It's basically what happens is the spiders, you know, has a certain link amount of link juice going up into your into your web from off site, and then it follows those links from this page to that page to this page, and then back up to the top again. So you're really you're amplifying your link juice throughout the website. Let me just go to change my settings here. <coughs> Excuse me. Put it again on post name, save changes. And now you would have to do that first in order to get these the inner site links because whatever your blog is set to make the link, that's what what it's going to be. So actually, you know what? I'm going to redo that to get it right. And here's how I'm going to do that. Now we have a button over here that says reinitialize this blog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be very, very careful about using this button because you can just you will destroy your whole blog if you if you use this. But that's what I want to do at this point because I want to start all over again. Again, you see this big red 
sign here. Pay attention to that and read it. It says, this action is undoable and all your content will be deleted, which is cool. So here's where we are now with this website. And you, you could be concerned that all this wonderful stuff that I put on there is going to be destroyed. But that's okay because we have everything saved in Keyworks. And we can just make it again with one click. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and the blog has been reinitialized and all content cleared. Now, again, be very, very careful when you use this. If I refresh that blog again, see we've got nothing found here. It's all gone. And since I redid my permalinks, that's why I wanted to redo it, because I wanted to get the right permalinks for my inner linking as I explained that to you. So now I can just go ahead and I can execute exactly the same. And it will again download whatever's on the blog. Here's the menu. So we can go back to this blog and refresh it. And now we have the same content here. When we, it's the mini site silo. When we go to German Shepherds and we now have the link. And as you can see in the lower left, if you can see the lower left, the link now has the fully siloed uh, name of the link of the page. Another thing you might want to do when you're doing this kind of silo is you might want to pick one to be your your main page on the website and you do that by going to reading static page German Shepherds or whatever you want save it. So now if I just click on the site the German Shepherds page will be the main page on that website okay but I can link now deep link to GSD puppies which deep links to GSD training which deep links to GSD breeding which deep links to GS GSD feeding which then links back up to the top. And now remember, folks, the way I did this, none of those deep link sites are available, are linked from anywhere else in the website. And that's how we manipulate the link juice around the website. Okay? Now let's say I want to add another silo. So let me make another new project. And I'll call it mini site silo number two and let's take another uh, let's take um, I don't you know just for the heck of it, I'm gonna say cats you know <laughs> so it's like, look this is not a, a lesson in you know content or all that it's really just a lesson in um, it's a lesson in building silos okay so I'm gonna add a few more words like Si Siamese cat, tabby cat, um, calico cat, Burmese cat. I right, didn't spell that right. Let me do that again. And once again, I'm going to you know, indent the child objects like this, make them pages, and I'm going to interlink cats to Siamese, Siamese to Tabby, Tabby to Calico, Calico to Burmese, and Burmese back to the top again. Now, I am going to be um, programming in some buttons that you can automate this process. We don't have it yet, but that's on my list of stuff. Now, in order for it to be deep linking, you must select make top level menus only, Frank, because that way the, the child objects do not get put in the menu. If you want them in the menu, just deselect this. The thing is, once you learn 
your way around this program, you are going to be able to invent new ways of putting your sites together using all these tools. Now, it might not be evident right this moment, but let me just go ahead and show you why I think that's true. Now, I'm going to add some really super quick content again, just so we have some. <clears throat> and the easiest way to do that is just get some videos with the blue T. <laughs> that looks good. Accept and close. And I'm going to do that for each one. This is for Siamese cat. This is for tabby cat. That looks good to me. Just doing it fast so we can move move on quickly. Calico cat. Again, open the editor, click the video button. I'm also planning to, you know, create, you know, more templates for this program so you won't have to go through all these steps as we add more automated features to it to make quality content that you still control but, you know, gets the job done for you, you know, more completely and qu more quickly. But you have to say it's not too shabby the way it is either. But, you know, I've always got ideas to add new stuff and I'm not going to stop building this out. This our, the what we do in Web Dimensions, we just keep building stuff into our software. And since you got in early, you got in at a good price, we will keep raising the price on our software as we add more and more stuff. But you've got it already, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, now I've got all the content and I've got all the interlinking. And now what I want to do is I want to add this mini silo to the existing mini silo. So we'll have this one will be for German Shepherds and then there will be another one for cats. Okay, I know maybe it doesn't make sense, but I'm just doing it for a demo. In this case, I want to select Add to Existing Silos. Because if I don't do that, it's going to just create a brand new silo for cats and take away the German Shepherd menu. The pages won't disappear, but the menu will. So we add to existing silos to get this stuck up in the same menu. And we make top level menus only so that we're going to have another deep linking mini silo from cats all the way through back to the top. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and execute now. There we go. Now it takes a, just a second to download what we've got. And now you can see down here at the bottom, on the lower left, we have cats and German Shepherds on the blog primary menu. And if we refresh the page, you see we still have this as our main front, but now we have another mini site silo here. Yeah, it is exciting, isn't it? So we click cats, and now we have the epic funny cats on this page, and we have a deep link to Siamese cat which now goes to Siamese cat, click to tabby cat, now goes to tabby cat, beautiful, beautiful, click on calico cat, and it goes to the calico cat page, Burmese cat, deep linking, remember all these deep linkings are not anywhere in the blog to be linked, because that's why they're deep linking, and it captures the link juice shoots it around your blog back up to the top. It's a way of capturing the link juice and save it. And we go back to cats at the top. So now we're back at the top and you can see it's selected up here. So now we have the two deep linking silos on this blog. Okay, now this is, it is really awesome. So now I want to show you something else. Okay, I, um, I didn't spend a lot of time on the authority site silo and I hope that's okay with you guys. But as you can see, by building the authority site silo, it's the one that gives you all the links to all the 
into everything. It just interlinks everything in your site and it shows the very well organized information store like this as I have shown you with the source code. This is how the bots see that the authority site because it's very well organized. Now the mini site silo is a different animal and it's it's exactly to capture the link juice and shoot it through your site back up to the top level of, of your site. You can, you can do anything. Uh, right now we don't automate the images linking, but the thing is you can manage this content any way you want to. And that's the next thing that I want to show you now. Back to my agenda. Okay, so we have now covered one through nine and now I'm going to move on to 10. Some of you already own ICC Express and others don't. ICC Express, yes, the authority sites also have link juice for sure. And it's just a different kind, right? It's authority link juice. It's not like mini link juice, right? You build an authority site, it's got tons of information and that's what brings the juice. A well, mini site is, is something that you're trying to whittle it down to a smaller niche and just get the, ju the juice for that niche, right? Okay, now what I'll show you is our other software, ICC Express, and I'm not like trying to sell you this, but I'm just trying to explain how our system works, okay? Because now with Keyworks, your Keyworks is used to create these structures, okay, and basically set them up in a way that they work really well. Now, ICC Express is a full-on content creation system. It does not build silos, but it populates your silos with content. That's what it's for in all different kind of ways. As you can see, ICC Express actually shares the same database on your computer with your ICC Keyworks. So it already has all your blog profiles in it from Keyworks. And it also has a bunch of Keywords and you can export your Keywords from Keyworks. You see all these Keywords that I have in ICC Express and these are all related to my other silos. Now here's what we can do that's really cool. <clears throat> I'm going to do is I'm going to select the profile. First, I'm going to select the profile for the mini site silo that I just that I just worked on. Okay. It's it's called Keyworks test number two, as you remember. If I go to my curation section here, you can see it looks very similar to the content creation section of Keyworks. In fact, it's very similar, but it has some very powerful additional features that Keyworks does not have. And one of those things is, of course, RSS feeds and news sources that, um, that Keyworks does not use. But the other thing, you know what, I think I'm, I'm going to open that again one time. It's, it's really complex. Sometimes the bandwidth gets kind of crazy when I'm doing it with, um, with uh, GoToWebinar. As you can see right down here, immediately what it does, it, it logs me into my Google Alerts account because I'm going to use my alerts to get content. But that's not the only place to get content. Of course, guys, it's another three-hour session to explain everything in this program, which I'm not going to do, but... You'll see what here we do have a lot of built-in um, RSS feeds that you can get pre-templated curated content from. Now what I want to do is I want to select my keywords test number two blog. I'm not sure why I'm getting that, but let me test it. And I gotta select a keyword. Okay, so I'm gonna go to select my keyword, which is just gonna be Right now, it's just going to be German Shepherd, German Shepherd Facts, and then I'm going to save that. Now, I'll come back here. Let me select that profile. 
I don't know what that's all about. I'll well, figure it out later. It gets kind of complex because we have so many different things. Um, yes, that's correct. Success tracks. So now we have that blog selected. We don't have any categories on this blog. As you recall, we made all pages. If I select number one, and I'm not sure why I'm getting that issue, but now if I selected keyword sex number one, you can see I have all those categories that I made on the blog. And these are, these are the categories on the blog, and I can curate content to those categories. Well, right now I'm just going to go to number two. Number two was all made with pages and no categories, as you recall. So what I want to do is I want to try and clean up some of those posts. I can click this open draft here, give it just a second, and then click pages. And you can see all the pages from that blog that I just made with Keyworks are right here. Can you see that? <clears throat> yes, yeah, success tracks. In ICC Express, it's not about the project. It's about the blog. So your blog is your project, right? So you t you uh, attach to that blog, and then you get you can deal with all the content of that blog. So I'm going to start with the very front page, which is German Shepherds. I'm just going to click that and click open, and you can see now I have the exact same page that I worked on, but it says write something here about German Shepherds, right? So, you know, um, I don't necessarily have an article ready to put in here, but, you know, if you're building a PBN or something like that, you're going to get your content from somewhere. And, in fact, I could even possibly get some content from, uh, you know, my RSS feeds get my built-in feeds. If there's anything about German Shepherds in here, I'm not sure that there really is. And we have a lot of different content here. But I could also add my own feeds for German Shepherds in here if I wanted to. I won't do that right now. But what I want to do is, you know, Whatever I want to do in here, you know, I could put all kinds of content in here, or, you know, whatever I wanted, blah, 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 blah. I could put in another image if I want to, you know, whatever you want to do. Again, clicking the, the blank tab puts the image in without any templated anything. Where, is, where did it go? Okay, I think you have to have your cursor in there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oops. So now I have this kind of cute picture here. And I can do, I can add a product with the golden monetization. I'm not sure why that product didn't work. There may be some automatic blocking on uh, the new WordPress. They just they just put 4.0. We do not currently have the AdSense code, but that's going to be coming up. When I have like three other forms of monetization that I'm going to be adding. So now I have fixed up this post and I should be able to just go ahead and post it and it will save the changes. Let's try it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my blog. And you can see that, in fact, it does now say I am crazy about German Shepherds. And it does have the new picture that I put on there and the other text and stuff. So that, And it does have my product. So this is how we use ICC Express to attach to our silos and enhance our content. We can also make new content. Let's say I wanted to make a brand new one. I'm just going to clear it and I'm going to select page because I want to make another page. We don't have categories on, on that blog so we just make a page and then we can 
find some interesting content. I don't think there's anything about German Shepherds in that one, but how about birds? <laughs> That'll work. And now we have a, um, some, some content. We can actually see the, the source by going to this one. Get a little extra curation from here. As soon as we see it, like we might want to just copy that, go back here and paste that in here. And, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> this is not a course in how to write articles, but I'm just showing you how to put stuff together. And you can put, uh, it's supposed to be for birds, so that one's got birds. So you can just type in birds here and get some birds pictures instead. The blank tab for no templating, center it, and then we can post this on the same blog, just like this. And then we can go view that post that I just made. And there it is on the new blog. Now, if I had wanted to upload this image to my blog, it would have made the file size smaller and not have to hot link it out to wherever it's coming from. But this is, you know, how, you know, technically how we can create curated content. And this one is not really linking up anywhere right now, so that's something we'd have to deal with, but we could do that in, in various ways. We could add it to a menu or whatever. The question posed to me right now is, how do these two programs integrate? Well, one thing is if you create categories, then you can select import keywords into profile and all the categories will be set up as keywords in your ICC Express program. And how does that benefit you? Well, let's pick another profile like this one for mixing and mastering. And Now, since I set this up with a lot of categories with keywords, these categories are all on the blog. And so now I can get content. See, I've created the silo with keywords, and then I've imported those categories into ICC Express as keywords. Okay, so now I can use these keywords, and I can select the... Uh, the category, and I can also match it over here with the keyword that I want. Let's say online DJ. So I want to use that for curating, and I'm going to just save that. So I can go back here, and you can see it's selected online DJ from my blog's categories. And now I can do something like get a video that's about online DJ. And now I can just create a quick post with that. So now I have online DJ championship finals with a video. And of course, I want to mark this up a little bit. And, but I can post it to that online DJ category. So that is one way that they in integrate. Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, I think I, I'm going to bring it to an end now and see if I can address a few uh, questions. And um, <clears throat> those of you that are complaining that it's too long, well, I did ask you if, if you wanted me to continue and the vote was that I should. So sorry it got a bit long, but that's just what everybody wanted. Uh, okay. I think what I'll do now is I'll just try to answer all the questions that I can answer and then we're going to call it quick call it quits.
Um, as far as I know, Roger, you can use any YouTube video, but the video, thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that comment. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, hate is going to hate. Um, okay, so let me try and get, get some of these questions. Actually, success track the button is is on keywords and it's right here and you select um, you can deselect these and just go import keywords into profile and then any category that you have in your silo will get imported into ICC Express okay um, now there's a lot of questions here so guys give me a little time to just get through them all if, if you don't mind um, just kind of track back. I think I answer all the questions about where the plugin goes and all that sort of thing. We had a question about is there a chance that the plugin may get uncovered by Google's crawlers? Well, First of all, if you have robots.txt on your website and it's saying, you know, to disallow the WP content folder, then technically they're not supposed to go in there, but I don't really trust them. They'll do whatever they want. So, you know, uh, the thing is, uh, the Silo Factory, guys, is not a spam plugin. It's not a, a link builder. It's not a, it's not a Google Gamer program it's the only thing it is it's an artist tool it's a tool to create with that's all it is therefore I don't believe it's even going to show up as um, a negative whereas some of the other things that are being sold to you this week definitely are things that are trying to game the system we are not trying to game the system in any way we are building things the way they want us to, and so I don't believe that even if Google did um, disobey your robot's text file and go looking for the silo factory, it's, it shouldn't be considered a negative because it's just something to help you create your content. It's not a, it's not a, game, a Google gamer. You know, it's not trying to hack the system. It's trying to help you make your content. So... I don't think there's even a negative associated with it. But after you create your website, you can delete it, you know, and put it on another site. And then when you make that one, you can delete it again. It's not like these other plugins that force you to make them stay on your website. And then they'll be found, right? Hope that makes sense. Um... Is the plugin a normal plugin? Yes, it's a normal plugin just like every other plugin that you get. Can you run ICC Keyworks on both Mac and Windows? Yes, you can. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. Um, if you have both Windows and Mac, will you have to deactivate the license from one to run the other? That depends on the level of license that you bought. If you only bought a single version, you may have to do that. But if you bought anything more than a single, you can install it multiple machines. Um, um, um. Do we use Keyworks for just creating well styled sites or for PBN or both? Well, a PBN is just... Um, basically a series of well siloed sites so yes you can use this stuff to create your websites on any for anything for a PBN or for anything else without any problem there's you know I don't see a footprint I just the only thing I'm gonna always recommend is that you put a little time into making some good content spun content is not good content crap content is not good content so on and so forth. Yes, the training is recorded and will be available. Um, let me scroll down a bit. I'm going to skip the questions from people that already left. 
okay just to make it um, to go fast we're almost done can you make money from AdSense using a squeeze page no I believe that is against Google's term of service um, success tracks can I suggest you create videos for some of the sections absolutely in fact we already have quite a few videos in the training section and I do owe you a few more of some of the finer points that we went over today that didn't quite get into the first wave of the training videos but I will be doing that um, <clears throat> going down going down the list if uh, okay about adding keywords if I don't have SEM rush I can upload a keyword list from the Google keyword planner as keyword ideas export okay and you'll get all the data for that um, can you also have the blog names in the sidebar? I mean, I think you mean the post names or page names. Yes, you can. It depends on how you set up your blog. And I've showed you what our tools do, and I, there are things that our tools don't do that you're going to need to put a little bit of TLC onto your blog for. Now, the links do appear in the menu if you do not select make top level menus only okay um, can you take for example the four main keywords and make them silos in a site and then add child keywords I do believe that you can do that um, let's see I've already told you how we integrate the keywords the the, the uh, with the categories on ICC Express. I'm planning to add an AdSense and a ClickBank section to the monetization. So you can watch for that to be coming in the program in the upcoming weeks. Um, I believe I've answered all the questions, by golly. Can I put expired domains with high PR and separate IPs on my VPS server or use separate hosting for each site? Yes, you can do either one of those. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this training, but that's for, you know, your PBNs. Now, guys, don't let anybody tell you that you can build a PBN with one click because you can't. <laughs> it takes a lot of smart stuff to get it done right. Okay, and then I'm here to help you with that. Um, what are you doing to prevent hackers on your silo websites? Well, the, fun, the weirdest thing is I've discovered that on certain hosting companies I get hacked and then when I do it my own way I don't get hacked. But if I put my site on like HostMonster, it's, it's hacked, period. If I put it on my own hosting, I don't get hacked. Of course, there are things you can use like WordFence. I'm not trying to brag, but I believe I, I am the, you know, I can see hacking better than WordFence can. And I mean, even WordFence isn't stopping the hacking, right? But I, all I have to do is look at the source code, and I know where it's hacked, and I know how to get rid of it. So um, what's next for ICC Express, Joseph? Well, okay. I'm planning to integrate an indexer, an instant indexing called the Crazy Indexer, which is awesome. Like I said, I'm going to implement ClickBank products and AdSense into it. I also have a huge plan for uh, a content creation system, which will involve um, content database and spinning, but I'm going to try to do it as tastefully as possible to help you create good content 
without just typing stuff like, you know, German Shepherds makes the world go round or whatever. <laughs> also, I have a new plugin coming up that will create automated video links for your sites that will be very good for your ranking and stuff, and that's coming up in the near future. <laughs> but guys, I think this is going to be um, the end of the of today's webinar. It's been over two hours. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, you know, please hit, hit me up in customer service. We're in the Facebook group. Post your questions there. I'm here to answer you. I'm here to help you. Reach out to me. I will help you any way that I can. Okay, guys. I'd love to hear your um, your comments about the webinar on the Facebook group as well. Okay, guys, so it's been really, really fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it too, and I'm going to go ahead and bid you all a fond adieu until next time. And you can look for some more training coming very soon. I'll get this stuff into some building block videos that you can just go one by one and learn all this stuff. I, this is a great program. There's so many ways you can use it. Thank you, IBH Software, for those five stars. I really, really appreciate it. It makes it all worthwhile. And thanks, guys, for being a part of ICC Keyworks. I'm so totally thrilled to have everyone on board. And I'll see you guys um, next time, okay? All right, awesome. Hey, Brazil. Hey, same to you, Valentino. You, you're the mom, man. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll see you guys again soon. Okay? All right. Good night. Bye-bye.